What's up, y'all? Sparty here, and I want to do a quick um, Android 7.0 Nougat overview on the Samsung Galaxy S7. Now, the main reason I've been taking so long to do more content on this specific phone is because I had to let my girlfriend use it for a little bit, hence why there's a bit of a crack right here on the uh, back let me turn the hold on. It's like a little crack right there. That's from her using it. <laughs> Cause I harked on her for to not use to not have the case on while charging it. Cause what used to happen is this phone used to get real freaking hot and it would like be to the point where it would not be usable, but what I want to talk about is, and apologies for if my voice sounds a bit like under the weather, I just got over a bit of a sickness, which I thought was just me not having <laughs> enough water, so my voice is a bit sore, but nonetheless, I just want to get this video out for you guys. Uh, all right, so the main thing that I want to talk about is I had to get this phone back in working order because when I first got this, it was Google account locked. <laughs> so I had to flash custom software to this and it would like constantly have a security message up there and it would constantly disconnect from Wi-Fi and not like stay connected to it despite the fact that I've been uh keeping it. No, not that. Despite the fact that I'm in keeping it on the same Wi-Fi. Like, if I would, like, restart the phone, it would, like, have me re-put re in the password and all that for the Wi-Fi and all that. So, what I did was I just reflashed, attempted to reflash stock firmware it didn't work but i just factory reset the phone it got back to regular working order and then i was able to reinstall nougat or install nougat on here through an otg update now keep in mind this is the verizon version of the s7 so <laughs> If you guys have a Verizon S7, this is essentially the video for you. Now, what I first want to talk about is it doesn't necessarily bring everything that the Samsung Galaxy S8 is bringing to the table, but you do get your tweaked camera UI. But the one thing that isn't there is that you can't swipe up and down with the... Uh, you can't swipe up or whatever to zoom like you could hold this on the s8 and just swipe it up and you'll be able to zoom like that but you can't out and in like that but you can't do it on here which is whatever and they pretty much adopted the way that lg does it to switch to the camp the selfie cam you just swipe up or down and you'll just switch back and forth now, the difference between this and LG's version is that you can swipe any corner, like left, right, up, and down. But on here, when you swipe left and right, you get your filters on the right and your modes on the left. So, yeah, that's what you get from that. Uh, What else? Focusing is still as fast as ever. And, you know... The S7 was touted to be the best camera phone specifically because, A, focusing was fast, but for me personally, I don't see it that way, mainly because even times that I do focus, it would tend to, like, you know, it would tend to lose focus pretty quickly. But what I want to talk about next is um fingerprint scanning on here. It's no faster than it was if you have your regular S7 that's still on, like, Marshmallow. 
there's really it's really no quicker than it was on there. So just keep that in mind. Now, uh, performance mode. Now, what you could do on here, this is essentially something that Samsung introduced with the Note Seven, and that's um being able to choose how you want your performance to be. I do not know why this phone is not focusing. Give me a second. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'll just manually focus for now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can choose to do it for games, entertainment, or high performance. High performance mode, you can't change the resolution of the user interface. So I'm going to show you guys what that does in a minute. Uh, so you go to your display. If you have it on, um, what was the performance mode on here? If you have it on optimized, you'll be able to change the resolution of the uh, screen and the overall user interface. And this is a feature I believe every phone should have. Just in case you want to be able to have eke out more battery life. You just keep it at 1080p or even more battery life. You can have it at 720p. You hit apply. You go back there. And you could tell a bit of a difference. It's not like terrible, but it's pretty nice to have that feature if you want more battery life. I personally keep it on quad HD, so that's whatever for me. All right, so what I want to talk about next is um uh, the other Nougat features that they have in here. So essentially what you can do on here is you could do this and you could still uh do what, you know, your typical Samsung version of multitasking is with the multitasking. It's kind of like Nougat, but it still has the Samsung touches where you could choose which other app you want to use so say you want to use youtube you can use youtube and be able to scroll and watch whatever video you want to watch and just like you know reconfigure certain stuff like say you're trying to get on wi-fi but also be on youtube you can connect to wi-fi right here then pick the video you want to watch right after that and just swipe up from there and you'll just get the full You'll get the full um, screen YouTube, essentially. And the one thing I want to bring up is that uh, when you go into YouTube now, the screen gets brighter. I don't necessarily remember when, if it was like that on before Nougat, but it is like that now. As you guys can see, it gets dimmer once you exit YouTube and it gets brighter when you get back into YouTube. <sighs> so basically to make content more enjoyable to watch, I guess. I do not understand why this phone doesn't want to focus right now. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. As I said, I'll do what I do. All right, another thing I want to talk about is that the user interface is still very smooth. Like, compared to how I, it was beforehand, when I first got this phone, you guys know I kind of trashed the phone because it would it ran like crap. And I kind of figured it was because of the software I flashed to it, not because the phone itself was trash. And now it runs very smoothly. With a lot of apps open, and you could also do the switch multi-taps quick switch between two different apps you can do that now on here too which used to be something that you had in like you know certain custom roms when you root your phone and it's nice that the and it's nice that it's in here too now <laughs> oh yeah right so i'm gonna talk about um <laughs> what it feels like to pretty much type on the phone it still feels pretty much the same like it doesn't feel no different so say if you're used to the samsung keyboard it's not really going to feel any different you can still swipe you can still do this and autocorrect is still as 
not good as pretty much any other keyboard that I've used. I'm going to switch it out pretty soon. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, I guess you can say. Apologies if I don't sound very enthusiastic. As I said, I'm kind of sick. But, but yeah, but in the app drawer now, you have pretty much, it's pretty much the same. It doesn't have what it does in the S8 where you can just swipe up or down to get to your app drawer. It doesn't have that, which is whatever. I, w I kind of wish they had that, but it's whatever. There's probably some sort of launcher on the store that I can get or some APK that I could find to have that <laughs> functionality. But again, I really don't care. It's not that big of a deal to me. <sighs> Otherwise, if you pretty much had an S7, you know how it is to use this phone. Uh, notifications. You get way more notifications on the always-on display here now. <laughs> like, it used to be you just got Samsung first-party app notifications. Which is one thing that when this came out and the G5 came out, people said the always-on display is better on the G5 because you got every single notification from every single app. So essentially what you do to launch, you know, a certain app from a notification is you double-tap on the... Uh, you double tap on the uh, icon and it'll just bring you to that. And since I don't have a SIM card in here, it shows that. It's trying to cast to my Google Home. But, but yeah. But I'm going to do a more in. I might do a re review of this. Let me know if you guys want to see that. And my versus video will be coming out tomorrow between this and the G6. I just want to do further testing. But it's still the same great build, same great camera. I might actually do like diff might actually do a more in-depth review on this and do like, you know. That's the downside of having a glass phone, <laughs> a glass back phone, no grip. But yeah, as I can probably see, what used to happen with this specific like phone is that there'd be jitters and stuff with the camera user interface while recording. That's gone too now. And I'm pretty sure that's because of the simple fact that, uh, the only real issue I have with this is that it takes longer to, you know, process videos and stuff when you press stop, whereas on my G6, it's pretty quick. And the Snapdragon 820 in here versus 821 in the G6 really isn't that much of a difference, so there really shouldn't be an excuse for that, but that's that's really nothing. That's just a nitpick. Don't type hateful comments because I said something like that. It's not really something that is super terrible. But yeah, the overall user interface is great. Like, it's very smooth. It's very smooth now. It's very, like, sleek and, like, trimmed down. It doesn't look very Sam. It doesn't look too Samsung esque, but it still feels that way. Like, animations. Animations are nice and smooth. But as you guys see, there's a bit of a delay when I press the home button, which is what a lot of people say that so phones with soft with soft keys, nav uh, fuck software na navigation buttons is the problem with that. But I've always had an issue with Samsung phones where there's more of a delay with this hardware key than there is with you know just a regular. <laughs> Just, you know, soft buttons. <laughs> but it's still, it's very nice and smooth nonetheless. Battery life has been way better now since I've got back to stock firmware. Everything's better as of now. So it'll be more of a fair comparison between this and the G6. But as I said, I'm going to do a re-review of this. Because I want to do it justice.
I felt like I didn't really do it enough justice with my first review because I kind of slammed the phone for being pretty sluggish. And then I kind of figured out later on that it was probably due to what I did to it to get it act to make it so I could actually get in, get in the phone. But just keep that in mind. A re-review of this will be coming soon. <sighs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. See, as you guys can see, I got a Google Photos notification. All you do is double tap on that. You swipe up and it'll bring you to it. <laughs> it must have made a GIF animation out of the um, burst shot I took. But yeah, that's pretty much it. As I said, this review, I don't know what the fuck I'm trying to say. I'm sick and I'm rambling, so I'm going to just end the video. <laughs> there really isn't a lot different, honestly. But it's more refined and it's more satisfying to use, I can say. <laughs> Aside from the issue that you guys obviously saw where there's a bit of delay with the hardware button. But it's whatever. This has been Sparta. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll be coming out with another, most likely another video tomorrow with this versus the G6. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the support and have a good one.